Tonight on CTV News, we're covering how voting has fared in Larimer County. Then stick around because we have updates on COVID testing sites, Halloween, and the Old Town Lights. All that and more on CTV News starting now. Welcome Rams, I'm Kenneth Frederick and welcome to CTV's Halloween special. I'm Sophia Ridley here with brother Kenneth of the CTV fraternity. Let's see what he has to say tonight. Fort Collins has had a prominent politician visit locals ahead of the election next week. Tom Perez, the chairman of the Democratic National Convention, came to visit uh, and talk with local Democrats about getting out and voting. That's okay. We thought that your mics were on, but it's just not feeding into the room. Okay. 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 Mm -hmm. You're good. We're good? Good save reading off of that. I was real confused okay. for you. <laughs> yeah, we're fine. Just like with Brian. Yeah. Can you move that pen? <laughs> All right, we're coming up to number one. talking about the importance of people going out to vote. Congressman Nagyu stressed this fact quite a bit. Democracy is not a spectator sport. It requires active, robust engagement from our citizens. And the best way to do that, in my view, is to exercise your right to vote. Both of the politicians personally couldn't stress enough how important the younger, younger generation going out and voting is. As election season comes to a head, politicians all over the country will be waiting to see how many young citizens will turn out for what Chairman Perez called the most important election of our lifetime. With a pandemic going on, the fear that there could be a lack of voters was a very real concern for candidates across the board. However, as November 3rd suit approaches, Larimer County has proved nothing will stop its citizens from casting their vote. Over 128,000 ballots have been returned as of yesterday morning, meaning over 52% of all registered voters in Fort Collins have participated in the upcoming election. This is nearly double the turnout at this time four years ago in the 2016 election. Colorado has been breaking early voting records since ballots were sent out at the beginning of October. After nearly a foot of snow in some areas in Fort Collins over the weekend, UC Health is having to work on opening alternative COVID testing sites. The storm proved testing in the elements was not ideal for Northern Colorado. According to the UC Health spokesperson, Ka Kelly Tracer, a safer location for wintertime testing operations that would hopefully avoid weather-related closures in the future. The testing site, located at the Medical Center of the Rockies, was closed Sunday, and all patients were redirected to the Harmony Road location. However, after, as this site, as well as others, was closed due to weather inconveniences. As of Tuesday afternoon, all drive through locations near and within northern Colorado will remain open. As of yesterday afternoon, Larimer County was added to the high-risk group of cities across the country that are dealing with the COVID-19 pandemic. The county's health department showed that of every 100,000 residents, roughly 230 people have tested positive. This ratio is over the 5% clip level set by the state, which means that officials will be looking to take additional actions to limit the spread of the coronavirus. This all comes after the county issued an emergency order focused on slowing coronavirus in youth recreational sports and office workplaces. Last week, if the actions taken did not lessen the pandemic's effects, future and stricter guidelines will be set in place. Yeah, I know that I'm definitely following those guidelines, definitely trying not to get COVID. Oh yeah, I'm trying to wear my mask, I'm trying to constantly look at the ordinances that are being updated through the city, and yeah, I think it's really smart. Absolutely. The city of Fort Collins is still on the lookout for a shelter for the homeless on cold days to come. But after an emergency ordinance passed on Tuesday, the Westminster Presbyterian Church will become a day shelter until the summer of 2021. The shelter will hold up to 75 people during the days that get winter storm warnings or don't get above freezing temperatures. 
Between the new shelter and two other locations, most, if not all, people will be able to find accommodation. There will also be an overnight shelter opening on Monday that could hold up to 150 people in Fort Collins that don't have a place to stay on cold nights. For many of us in Fort Collins, our skies have been filled with smoke and our cars covered in ash in recent months. For one firefighter, he lost his home to the fires while saving others. After a decade of building his dream home, volunteer firefighter Taylor Clifton lost his home to the Camera Peak Fire. Clifton was digging fire lines around another house, and due to the lack of Wi-Fi in the area, he was not able to activate his home sprinkler system to fight the fire on his very own property. And although he lost everything but an old tractor, he was happy he helped prevent others from suffering the same loss. David Gatton, a Larimer County man, chose to plead no contest to a Class 4 felony of extortion. The district attorney's office dismissed two other charges, a class 4 and a class 6 felony. This comes after Gatton admitted to sending texts threatening to commit shootings at two schools in March of 2019. He will undergo the pre-sentence investigation report before the hearing scheduled for December 23rd of this year. With Halloween this weekend, I spoke to students on campus about how they plan to safely celebrate the holiday. This year, the scariest part of Halloween aren't the ghosts or ghouls, but the spread of coronavirus. Some students are so scared, they're leaving Fort Collins for this holiday weekend. I will be fleeing Fort Collins over Halloween weekend because I actually think it's a really big problem and I think people need to be safe and make smart decisions, um, especially within our community. So my friends and I are going away for the weekend. We booked a cabin up in Breck, so we're all just gonna go there for the whole weekend and kind of avoid plans here in Fort Collins. With house parties going on and bars being packed, the risk of spreading and contracting COVID are definitely concerning. You know, it, it's kind of scary just because like, we're all going back to our families probably for Thanksgiving. And so it's just kind of scary to think that, you know, people are gonna be going home after Halloween to their homes and Thanksgiving and they could be passing it to all of their different home states and stuff. Larimer County Health and Environment has public health orders that limits gatherings to 10 people from two separate households. Failure to comply with this can result in a class one misdemeanor, fines, and even imprisonment. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention continue to encourage the public to social distance, wear masks, and avoid situations that can lead to an outbreak. Have fun, be safe, and have a happy Halloween. With coronavirus in mind, Larimer County is constantly keeping local ordinances updated. I don't know about you, Sophia, but I'm a bit of a nerd. I'm going to be spending my Halloween playing D&D. &D. What about you? Um, I'm going to be more of like a dog mom nerd where I'll just probably be hanging out with my dog all night. I'll have a bowl of candy out for trick-or-treaters because I'm in a family-friendly neighborhood, but that's going to be quiet for me this weekend. It sounds like an awesome plan. Yeah. Even though the decisions on developing the Hughes Stadium property are now out of the hands of the city of Fort Collins, Colorado State University's Board of Governors are moving ahead with work on the area. After negotiations between CSU's Board of Governors and the City of Fort Collins failed, the Board of Governors are now moving ahead with their plan to develop the land on their own terms. They plan to put over 600 homes and apartments for the university's low-income employees. There is, however, a petition put forward by a local group to put a ballot measure in the spring for the city to buy the property at market price in order to keep the area entirely open space. With all that COVID has canceled, many Fort Collins residents have been holding their breath and crossing their fingers, hoping the city lights would still go up. We'll hope no further. The lights will be twinkling across Old Town very soon. Although there won't be a large ceremony celebrating the annual lighting event due to gathering restrictions, the lights will be put up and turned on in waves. They should be lighting up the night by early November and will remain to brighten up Fort Collins until February 14th. Well, Rams, thank you so much for tuning in to our Halloween special. Tune in with Angel Cooper up next. Listen, you're my friend. I noticed you haven't really been yourself recently. Yeah, I feel like something's up. How are you? Are you okay? Is there anything you want to talk about? I just want to know how you're feeling. And listen, even if you don't know what to say, I'm here to talk. No matter what you're going through, I just want you to know I'm here. I've got your back. When you want to talk, I'm here.
what's up Rams and happy early Halloween. Welcome to entertainment. I'm Angel Cooper or frat boy. Let's dive right into it. Spooky season is here, but with the pandemic, some Halloween traditions will look a little different this year. The CDC has spookified their COVID-19 guidelines by allowing trick-or-treating as long as people wear masks, leave a bowl of candy outside, have a hand sanitizing station, or leave a trick-or-treat table on the driveway with gift bags. This is so exciting, and I love going trick-or-treating. Oh, I mean, going, uh, giving candy out to little kids. My fault. If, I, if handing candy out isn't enough, you can continue your Halloween night by going to the Holiday Twin Drive-In. The Holiday Twin Drive-In encourages people to dress up and decorate their cars for the trunk or treat. There will be booths located all around the property where candy will be handed out. They will start their celebration a day early, playing Coco and Hocus Pocus on Friday, and Saturday they will play The Nightmare Before Christmas and Hocus Pocus Halloween. Those are definitely classic, and that is the golden ticket right there. Typically, Halloween involves children and their parents going door to door to get candy, but what, what, but what if all this candy came to your door? Reese's, the chocolate and peanut butter, Peanut Butter Creation wanted to build a Reese's Trick or Treat remote control robot that can bring Reese's to you. All you have to say is Trick or Treat and the robot gives you a king size Reese's peanut butter cup. If you like that idea, go to at Reese's on Instagram and tell the company where the robot should go next using hashtag Reese's Doors. Now that seems like a clever idea, but I don't think I want a robot giving me candy. If the things I have listed are not your cup of tea and you're wanting to get scared, then the Harrington's Haunted Hotel can definitely do that. This is our 10th year and this is only the second time we've been in this building. So we decided to do it here after the many years of traveling from spot to spot just because I didn't want to take the risk of people not coming. Uh, we know with COVID, people, some people are staying in, but then adversely a lot of people are like, I gotta get out. Kids that are just bummed out because they don't have anything to do positively. So um, we fight to keep this place open. The haunted house is an extension of that and it's like the one thing that certain actors only do, this is the only thing they do all year. Some people do everything with us, but there's some people that are just hardcore haunted house. If we didn't have that, it would just be crushing to them and us. In an enormous performance setting, usually actors have a few hours to gain the audience attention. But here, in a haunted house, actors only have 15 seconds. So different because you still have an audience. Your audience is moving through instead of sitting in front of you, but you still have an audience that you have to support. And it's very challenging because it's, you know, two or three hundred people, you know, normally. A night. I'm not here to try to like life scar you or like have you never sleep in your own bed again. Um, we're here just like we do for our shows. We're here for entertainment to give you a wow factor. The goals are always to get as many people in here as possible safely for our actors and for the attendees. But just giving people a great show, that's what we do. Now, Harrington's Haunted Hotel will be having a holiday walk in in a few weeks where you can see Buddy the Elf. Grinch, A Christmas Story, and so much more. Also, they'll have an option for those people who like to be adventurous, meaning they want to get scared. <sighs> and now, let's get excited. Drum roll, please. My favorite part, what's the hype? Let's check on some spooky things happening on social media. SNL is scheduled for a new episode on the night of Halloween. John Mulaney is set to return to Saturday Night Live with The Strokes as a musical guest. Mulaney is a former writer for the NBC late night sketch comedy series and last appeared on the show when he hosted on February 29th. Mulaney will appear on the show this time in support of his upcoming John Mulaney. This, will, this episode will mark The Strokes' fourth appearance as musical guest on the show. They are appearing in the support of their latest album of the new Abnormal, which reached number one on Billboard's Top Rock Album and Alternative Albums chart. Now, on to my favorite news of the night. Betty Midler announced that Hocus Pocus is reuniting for a sequel. The Sanderson sisters are hoping to put a spell on you 27 years later. Midler, who played Winnie Sanderson, told Fox News New York, quote, they want to make a movie. They asked us if we were interested, and of course, all of us said yes, end of quote. I'm so happy and that a sequel is coming. I wonder who's going to be in the sequel, though. 
And finally, Sabrina Spellman will be coming back to Netflix one last time in part four of The Chilling Adventures of Sabrina, and it will be out December 31st. When we last finally saw the teenage witch, she had split herself into two beings that she could rule hell and continue her life on Earth. In the trailer, you can see both of them on either side of the colossal crystal ball, part four filmed at the same time as part three, which aired at the beginning of 2020. Netflix reportedly canceled the chilling adventures of Sabrina last summer, but they wanted to do one more part where they were, this is a sad show because uh, this is their last goodbye. Well, Rams, that's all the entertainment that I have for you tonight, but don't go anywhere because Yane Moran, I mean my frat brother, has some news to tell you about the weather. Yane? Thank you, Angel, or should I say brother? <laughs> That's right. Last week, our temperatures dropped significantly, but this week, our temperatures are starting to go up. Find out more after the break. So there you are. Shuffling through a stack of resumes and you come to mind. This is it. First impression. My way in. But, uh, here's the thing. Can my resume show you how I truly stand out? Can one piece of paper really tell you my whole story? Like, that I was studying, going to night school while working two jobs just to help my parents pay for groceries. Or how any time there was an opportunity, I was the first one to step up. Because I wasn't going to let my life, my circumstances, dictate who I was going to become. And all of that, that determination, the commitment, the drive, that's me. And that's something you just can't put on paper. Look beyond the resume and discover new ways to develop great talent like me. Welcome back from the break, Rams. Bienvenidos de vuelta. I am Yane. Let's get right to it. Right now, our current conditions, we are at 40 degrees, so it is actually perfect temperature. It's not too cold or it's not too hot. We do have clear skies tonight, and we do have slightly, uh, it is a bit windy, at 6 miles per hour headed now northwest, and 4% uh, cloud cover. Now, on campus today, it was very sunny out. The snow is starting to melt. However, we are seeing piles of snow along with some leaves due to the snow. We also have some puddles, so watch out because you might splash some water on your shoes. The snow on the trees is also starting to melt, which looks beautiful. And also, the snow on the voting box ballot has melted. So if you haven't already, you still have five days left till election day. Now for our overnight lows along our I-25 corridor. We do have a bit chilly temperatures tonight. So in Denver, we are at 34 with Pueblo at 31. Along our western side here, Gunnison at 12 degrees, which is very chilly. And then Craig as well at 16. And for our eastern side in Sterling at 24. And then Lamar at 28. So it is pretty chilly tonight. But for tomorrow's highs along our I-25 corridor, 60 in Denver, Colorado Springs and Pueblo at 58, and then Fort Collins at 53. And on our mountainside, we do have warmer temperatures tomorrow, so Tayloride at 49, and then Grand Junction almost at 60. But on our eastern side, also in the 60s with Burlington and Limon. Now for tomorrow's forecast in Fort Collins, we do have a high of 53 and a low of 35. It will be very sunny out and then the sunset will be at 558. So if you're trying to go out and do your spooky activities, keep in mind the sunset is almost at 6. Now for our five day forecast, we have a lot going on this week. Whoa, that's bright. Should use these sunglasses, huh? Friday again at 53 with a low of 35. Saturday, Halloween, of course, with a high of 56 and a low of 27. And on Saturday night, don't forget to turn back your clocks. One hour, you do have an extra hour to go trick-or-treating, sleep, or as my fraternity brothers call it, partying. You have one extra hour, so Sunday, remember to do that. And a, low, a high of 45 on Sunday with a low of 34. 
And then Monday with a high of 63 and a low of 36. Tuesday is election day. We will have our highest temperature on Tuesday with a high of 65 and a low of 38. So there should be no excuse with the weather for this week because we will start to see our temperatures rise. That is all we have for the weather tonight, but don't go away just yet. Dad? Just one minute, okay? Hey, Bobo, do trees tell each other stories? I'm sorry, I'm afraid I don't know that. Hey, why don't we go find out? Listen. Do clouds take naps? I couldn't tell you. Can birds draw pictures? I don't have an answer for that. Dad, do stars visit their friends? Look! How's it going, Rams fans? Welcome back to your spooky Thursday night sports show, The Blitz, hosted by yours truly, Brendan Fairbairn. This week, I'm going to take a deep dive into the Grin Iron recruiting scene to meet some new CSU football commits for the upcoming class of 2021 and see how they're dealing with remote recruiting, as well as taking a look at some sports betting locks for tonight's CSU football opener. With all this being said, I have a football pack show to get into tonight, so let's jump right into it. As Rams football finally reaches its long-awaited return, I decided it was a good time as ever to sit down with two of CSU's football top athletes from the appending class of 2021 to talk about their experiences with the unusual at-home recruiting procedures in place and give CSU fans a taste of what these commits will bring to the program here in Fort Collins. On March 13, 2020, the NCAA initiated a dead period on college recruiting for all sports. The dead period means no face-to-face -face contact between coaches and recruits. Coaches and current players could still communicate with recruits over text, email, phone, and video. More recently, effective as of September 16, 2020, the NCAA committee voted to extend the dead period through the end of this year. This past weekend, I sat down socially distant over Zoom, of course, to interview two CSU class of 21 football commits and allow them to open up about their time with the new remote recruiting process. Three-star defensive lineman Grady Kelly from Navarre High School in Florida and local three-star offensive tackle Justin Michael from Poudre High School are both super eager to begin their college careers in Fort Collins starting next year. It's different because obviously like having friends that have went through the recruitment process and yeah. stuff like and them letting me know how their recruitment process was. Mine's definitely been different. At the end of the day, like, what a lot of the guys tell me is, like, you got to go where you feel, like, wanted and where you fit and stuff like that. And, like, even without being able to physically go to the school, I can also be able to, like, build those bonds and connections, which was huge for me. So, like, that's why I kind of feel like, even though I haven't visited, when I do visit, it's the connection and stuff still going to be there. I think, well, I got recruit. I got offered first by Bobo's staff and i i guess that they were they were i mean it was i only met them once so uh -huh. and that was when they offered me so of course i was happy so, but i never really got to know them that well it was a lot different than what i saw with brian because he got to go on visits and stuff like that um it was just a bunch of calls text yeah. messages and zoom calls and facetimes and stuff like that csu's defensive line will be getting a max crosby type player with grady kelly's finesse and power moves off the d-line and his ability to absolutely dominate. Actually, a relatively new player this year that I found myself playing a lot like would be uh -huh. um, Max Crosby of the Las Vegas Raiders. When I watch him play, I just see a lot of the same like finesse type of moves that I use in pass rush and like yeah. still, still really like dominant and a big presence in the run game too. So I'll definitely like I kind of see myself as stylistic matched up with him. On the offensive side for CSU, former tight end, now offensive tackle Justin Michael 
brings a dual threat, aggressive, and athletic approach to his style of game, which fits perfect for new head coach Steve Adazio's hard-nosed style of play. My athletic ability, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm good at going downfield and getting linebackers and polling mm -hmm. and I'm good at pass sets and stuff like that. CSU fans are in for a treat next year once Kelly and Michael suit up for the Rams in September of 2021. Hopefully, once the COVID-19 outbreak has been contained, so fans can get a front row seat to these future CSU stars. Rams offensive line coach Louis Adazio and defensive line coach Antoine Smith are going to have a blast developing the raw talent of defensive tackle Grady Kelly and offensive tackle Justin Michael. Next season, that's for sure. Switching gears a little bit from the future of Rams football and coming back down to the present. As of last week, my pick for the New York Giants to cover the plus 4.5 spread against division rival Philadelphia Eagles hit. This week, I am just as confident in my spread and over-under picks for CSU's first game of the 2020 season against the Fresno State Bulldogs in this week's edition of What Are the Odds? CSU opens up Mountain West play as 1.5 point favorites against the 0 and 1 Bulldogs according to FanDuel Sportsbook. This spread line is very even, but CSU has the best chance to cover out of both squads. The Rams are 5 and 2 in the last 7 games against the spread versus the Bulldogs, winning 6 of their last 7 matchups against them. Meanwhile, Fresno State is the exact opposite, going 1 and 4 in their last 5 home contests against the spread. CSU has a brand new coaching system and no Warren Jackson to make the transition any easier. Sophomore receiver Dante Wright and junior tight end Trey McBride are going to have to pick up the slack on the receiving end to keep the Rams' explosive offense from last year intact. I have CSU covering the 1.5 spread with a victory of at least 4 points, starting the season strong at 1-0. and oh. Well, Ram fans, that's all the sports-related goodness I have for tonight. If you tune in, make sure to tune in next week for, to see more of my sports betting locks for CSU's next game against Wyoming. Have a wonderful weekend and have a great Halloween, and we'll see you on Monday for CTV Sports.